From the day of his birth, Kokoto must run. The African bush is a dangerous place. But he's an impala built for speed. In the race for survival, these antelope are masters of escape. For over 50 years, survival has captured spectacular images of the natural world. Now we use the very best to bring you stories of animals as they could occur in the wild. The frightening African bush is lit only by lightning. Dark is the time of predators. This is Jabali, a female impala. She is carrying a baby inside her and is at her most vulnerable. Her herd is being watched from the shadows. Sinea, the female leopard, is their arch enemy. They are locked in a constant battle, each trying to outwit the other. Jabali is in trouble. It looks like it's over, but nothing in the bush is guaranteed. A hyena seizes the frightened antelope, but Jabali isn't going to lose her baby, not this way. Astonishingly, she fights free of the killer jaws. The odds were stacked against her, but this is one determined impala, her first great escape. Impala are Houdinis of the animal world, alert, agile, and fast. Like most of the females at this time of year, Jabali doesn't return to the herd. Instead, she seeks solitude. Jabali is preparing to give birth. Unable to flee while giving birth, she must rely on thick cover to avoid a predator's detection. She welcomes her son, Kokoto. Impala give birth in late morning, a time when most predators are asleep in the heat of the day. This family planning should give Kokoto a couple of hours to find his feet before the troubles start. Almost immediately, the little male tries his legs. Right now, they are rubbery, but these will become his principal weapon. He has inherited the limbs of an athlete. Speed is vital to his survival. A few days' seclusion from the herd gives Jabali and Kokoto the chance to get to know each other and recognize each other's calls and smells. Just half an hour after his birth, tiny Kokoto takes his first steps, following his mother through the scrub that is to be their new home. He is part of a herd of 300 impala. Their home range is rich bush country, well watered and green, an impala paradise. The only downside is that high numbers of impala attract predators. Under the cover of darkness, Sinea the leopard is the greatest threat. Keen eyesight, padded silent paws, and camouflage. She has a streamlined design with one purpose, to kill.
In the dense vegetation, she snatches a young impala buck. The carcass weighs more than she does, but despite its bulk, she carries it to a tree out of the reach of other predators. She even checks under the tree, disturbing the dirt to break up a scent trail that would lead prying noses. She has a special reason for keeping her meal safe. It's not just for her. She leads her tiny six-month-old cub back to the tree. He is still practicing the leopard's spectacular climbing abilities. But in the African bush, competition is fierce. A small pride of lions are a constant annoyance. Not only are they after the same prey, but they also represent a threat to Sania and her cub. And then there are the hyenas. A den lies in the heart of Sania's territory. Hyenas and leopards are constant enemies. However, once the sun comes up, the predators largely head for the shadows, leaving the scrub to the grazers. Amazingly, the impala herd thrives despite the dangers. They seem forever to race around their home, keeping their lithe bodies in good shape, knowing that at any time, their fitness could save their life. Jibali has brought her son to meet his neighbors. Though only a few days old, he's already confident on his dainty legs and brimming with playful energy. All of the mothers have given birth at the same time because the breeding season was during the end of the rains. So Kokoto has a wealth of playmates his own age. At the height of summer, Bigger game from the surrounding bush congregates in the impala's range, coming to take advantage of their water supply. Unfortunately, buffalo are big bathers and quickly turn a drinking fountain into a mud bath. But the mud packs will keep colossal bodies cool and more importantly, keep biting insects at bay. Even Sunia the leopard is struggling with this heat and sleeps under the canopy. At this height, a gentle breeze makes it more bearable. She's found a great spot to watch the game. The impala can sense her presence, but not see her. But despite the temptations, she's really too hot to hunt. The impala cope well with the heat, but still rest in patches of shade where they can. And now is their chance for a bit of beauty therapy. Summertime sees a buildup of biting insects and ticks that could cause health problems if unchecked. But luckily, help is at hand. Oxpeckers offer a grooming service. This is a good business arrangement. The impala employ the birds to keep their fur clean and healthy and pay them with a rich menu of blood-filled parasites. It can be a bit tickly around the ears, but the impala are patient hosts. They can't reach their own heads to groom and rely on the birds to keep them in tip-top shape. Even little Kokoto sits tight for a clean-up, though his practitioner is an apprentice still calling in the hope that his parents will feed him rather than hunting for himself. He's out of luck though. His mum and dad are on the next Impala buffet, planning a nursery for their nest brood. Eventually, the fur thieves get a bit intense. Slowly, Kokoto is starting to make friends, 
but sometimes the older bucks can be a bit heavy-handed. In the cool of the evening, the bucks become restless. The fawns are first to feel their frisky moods. Kokoto is only a couple of weeks old, with no sign of his horns yet. He has nothing to fight back with. The young bucks start looking for more worthy opponents. Kokoto and playmates his own size copy the older bucks. At the moment, it's just play, but eventually these fights will be the key to their breeding success. The babies soon settle down and relax together. Unfortunately, all animals welcome the evening cool. The leopard is on the move. Throughout the bush, day workers retire and the night shift makes their way out. Swallows plunge dive to wash away the dusty day before settling at their roost. Jabali starts looking for a bed for her son. Because he is so small, it's much safer for Kokoto to sleep alone. He is less likely to be found by predators at a distance from the conspicuous adults. Obediently, he settles, and Jabali goes off to browse with the herd. Alone and vulnerable. The bush is a big, scary and dangerous place for the little male. The haunting, taunting cries warn that the hyena clan is on the prowl. Before setting out to hunt, the female spends some quality time with their young pups. Like Kokoto, the little hyenas will also have to spend the night alone. Kokoto can hear movement all around him. He knows his only chance of survival is to remain absolutely still. Dick seems to work. The hyenas pick up a scent. It's a near and a fresh impala kill. The hyenas gang up, ready for a pack attack. Sunia the leopard spots the hyena pack. There are far more than she can stand up to, so she retreats. Better lose this meal than risk an injury that could stop her providing for her cub. With bone-crushing jaws, they tear into the carcass. Sunia can only watch. Like most predators, the hyenas eat as fast as they can, snatching the opportunity before another animal arrives to claim the meal. The scouts that found this kill are youngsters. When adult females arrive, they must relinquish what's left. The females gather the last scraps and carry them back to the den. The persistent pup tries to claim more than his share of the meal. Hyenas are gentle with their pups, and squabbles over food are rare. The whole clan will eat well tonight.
Noisy Franklins give a wake-up call to the bush. Night has passed and predators have lost their cloak of darkness. The Impala watch their every move. Jabali's baby has remained motionless in exactly the same spot where she left him. She collects him from his peaceful solitude and brings him back to the herd. Now, as the babies are getting more confident, the herd runs a crash scheme. One or two mothers take turns looking out for all of the babies in the herd. This frees up Jabali to wander off to feed. She'll return to the crash several times, and despite dozens of fawns all looking the same, she need only bleat and Kokoto comes running, ready to enjoy a rich drink of milk. After a meal, the fawns nap but are quickly up and playing again. A game of chase in the bush is not without risks. Any youngster that runs too far is in danger. A jackal, a small but cunning hunter. It's lucky that Kokoto stayed close to his mother, but the jackal's victory is to be short-lived. Again, a member of the hyena clan spots a chance to cheat. Born survivors, the hyena pups are growing fast. As powerful hunters and heavyweight scavengers, the hyenas rarely go hungry. Because the hyenas are so persistent, Sunia has dragged her latest victim 30 feet above the ground. This is one carcass that will definitely stay out of reach. The dry season is drawing to a close. Stormy winds rattle the bush. Thunderclouds build, promising water to the dry plains. The heavy downpours bring life to a standstill, but it's worth the wait. The water will bring new riches for the herd. They chew the cud, giving their tough leaf diet a second grind, chewing to extract as much nutrients as they can, waiting for the rain to pass. Like most cats, Sunia is not a fan of getting wet and seeks some cover for herself and her cub. The river that courses through the heart of the Impala's territory has burst its banks. Engorged by the rain, it fuels a growth spurt in the vegetation, providing bountiful food to hungry herbivores. The thick new canopy provides welcome shade for Sunia. She calls for her cub. The young male is growing fast. But his greatest challenge is to come. He has to learn to hunt. He still has to learn how to move silently like his mother. Prey such as bushbuck, impala, and bush pig 
have advance warning of his arrival and have nothing to fear. Everywhere he wanders, he's announced by the warning calls of Colobus monkeys. Luckily, the cub is well provided for by his mother. She'll feed and teach him until he is at least two years old and able to fend for himself. For the time being, he seems much more interested in play. There is now ample cover to conceal game animals from the larger predators, but it comes at a cost. The humid conditions bring a plague of biting bugs. Little Kokoto does his best to nibble and scratch the pests from his fur. The entire herd becomes a constantly twitching, itching mass, tails and ears swinging wildly to deter the flies. They keep on the move in a futile attempt to escape attack. Play fighting is a welcome distraction. Kokoto and his playmates are growing stronger and their wrestling ever more determined. Slowly, Tiny, horny humps are appearing on their heads, the start of their horns. The forms seem to have inexhaustible energy reserves. This is all good practice for the day they'll need speed to escape. The exaggerated seesaw motion is something the youngsters will use throughout their lives to display their fitness. It might just be enough to make a predator think twice before taking them on. is one of the fastest in the crash. He stops to check where mum is, but then gets back to racing. He seems to be showing off his speed. By day, the Impala seem almost invincible, but when the sun sets, the tables are turned. Kokoto now spends the night with his mother, but even now the herd fragments into smaller groups that can hide in dense bush. It's their best defense against the dangers of the night. Sunia, the leopard, needs to hunt tonight to feed her growing cub. can't see her. The herd is restless, sensing danger in the dark. Kokoto stays close to his mother. Sunia is getting close. She's almost ready to strike. Kokoto is in the firing line. But hyena barks spook the herd. She tries to recover the situation and uses the impala's panic to her own advantage. A yearling buck falls foul of her claws. But it's not a clean kill. The frightened impala bleats, warning the herd, but also telling every other animal hunting the area that Sunia has made a kill. It takes less than a minute before the hungry opportunists are on the scene. 
Leopards usually give way to the hyena's fearsome jaws, but the first hyena to locate the kill is a youngster. Sinia does her best to stand her ground. She tries to steal it back. She only has a few minutes to feed before hyena reinforcements arrive. Against more than one, there is no point in even trying. With their bone-crushing jaws, the hyenas begin their demolition of the carcass. The pack has so many hungry mouths to feed that they spread out at night to forage. While some enjoy the stolen goods, Others go in search of a more lively meal. The scouts have sniffed out a warthog, sheltering in an underground burrow. Warthogs can be dangerous, especially when backed into a corner. With lethal tusks pointing outwards, the hyenas might regret being quite so inquisitive. They can tell that it's only a youngster cowering within. The hyenas are too young and jumpy to call his bluff. The little warthog has survived the night, but his troubles are far from over. Sunia sometimes begins her day with a checkup on the local burrows. She knows that warthogs are sluggish in the morning and fond of lions. Nervous noses twitch. She hears a sound underground. It's all she needs to know. The sounds of the kill seem to draw concerned neighbors, but there is nothing they can do. At last, Sunia has a generous breakfast for her and her cub. Kokoto has survived another night. The morning carries a new air of anticipation. Up to now, Kokoto's family has only consisted of females and their calves. But the yearning bucks that pushed the fawns around are now overshadowed. The big boys are back in town. The bucks will begin to stake out small territories that they will defend. These are bachelor pads that they will use to try and lure a mate. Sexual tension fills the air. The male begins to win over a female by gently caressing her rump. But less experienced boys sometimes get carried away. If they are too forward, they might blow their chances. Though even successful couplings are brief. The breeding season takes a heavy toll on the bucks. They must defend their territories and fight off challenging males before they can court females and mate. Sunia knows that at this time, the bucks are at their most vulnerable. The bucks are turbocharged by hormones coursing through their veins. They vent their energies on bushes, rehearsing their best fighting moves. But the testosterone clouds their judgment. 
Sunir monitors their every move. Once bucks come face to face, a mini standoff ensues. They posture, flexing their powerful neck muscles and elegant horns. Lip smacking and exaggerated yawns are a challenge. Eventually, they must go head to head, the moment Sunir has been waiting for. The males are so focused on fighting that they are oblivious to the threat. It's a waiting game. A 100-pound male impala can inflict serious wounds. Timing is everything. Before she has the chance to strike, the bucks break away. The resident male has overpowered his challenger. Sunir will have to try again. The victor gets back to his females. The breeding season comes at the start of winter. After months of lush grazing, the impala are in good health. But for the bucks, the endless bouts of fighting and courtship are beginning to take their toll. Weakened bucks become targets for predators. Sunir has picked up the scent of a carcass and tries to pinpoint its location. It's a race to a feast, but she's been beaten to it. But this time, even the hyenas might struggle to hold on to their prize. Another pack is passing through, hunting dogs. These social predators are typically nomadic, but settle in one place for a few weeks to raise their pups. With a growing family, they are always searching for food. The packs circle and inspect one another. It's a body count. It becomes clear that dogs have numbers on their side. They strike. Sunia knows that all is lost and continues her search for food. The dogs gulp down their prize, barely pausing for breath. They'll strip the carcass bare in minutes. They will carry food back to the den in their bellies where a hungry litter of puppies waits expectantly. Sometimes called painted dogs, the striking markings are unique to each individual. Highly social, every member of the pack helps to feed and protect the pups. It's soon clear why the dogs were so keen to snatch an easy meal. They have 13 hungry mouths to feed. To feed their young, the adults regurgitate chunks of meat. Thanks to the plentiful game, the pups are growing fast, and it won't be long before the hunting dogs move on. It's one less pressure for the impala herd but they are far from safe. Sunir has secured a young impala buck, but this time she wants to make sure her prize isn't stolen. 
It weighs more than she does, but that won't stop her trying to get it out of reach and fast. As usual, it doesn't take long for the hyena pack to pick up the scent. But they're too late. Hyenas are powerful and intelligent, but they can't climb trees. It would seem that this time she's got one up on the competition. But then, a lioness picks up the scent. Dragging their prey into the branches is usually enough for leopards to protect their kill from lions. But the promise of an easy meal is more than this lioness can resist. But then the rest of the pride arrives. The female's enthusiasm is bolstered. Having lost her last few kills, Zania is reluctant to abandon her new prize. But she's no match for a determined lion. The lioness seems keen to keep the carcass to herself, but her sons have other plans. Zania has moved to higher branches, too thin to hold lions. She's safe for now, leaving the pride to squabble among themselves. Lions know their limitations. They are not good climbers and prone to the occasional fall. Fighting at this height could be fatal. Mother decides she's had enough, but the youngsters aren't going to give up. They intend to hang in there until they secure their prize. Finally, it's shaken loose. Chaos ensues as the family each lay claim to the spoils. Winter creeps across the land. Though cooler, there is still no rain, and the morning mist is a welcome respite. The river levels have dropped, and animals must trek further to drink. Having eaten their fill during the night thanks to Sinir, the lions are well fed and have no interest in making a kill. They barely notice Kokoto passing with the rest of the impala. The one young lioness can't resist the urge to spook the herd. Once the air's warm enough to carry their heavy bodies, vultures take to the skies and quickly spot the last remains of Sania's kill. They offer a clean-up service, removing the last remains of carcasses that could represent a health hazard to the other animals of the plains. Marabou stalks stride in. These charismatic birds will eat just about anything. They have the advantage of height, and vultures usually give them right of way. But at the lower level, vultures compete fiercely for the choice cuts. Lappet-faced vultures are big enough to barge in. It quickly claims the few bones that remain, much to the disappointment of the rest of the flock. This dry spell puts the impala herd under greater stress. 
They quickly consume the last of the green vegetation in their reach, but help is at hand. Kokoto watches his mother demonstrate a bit of neighborly exploitation. It's a drastic measure, but elephants don't take no for an answer. As far as they are concerned, no food is out of reach. Their philosophy? Throw your weight around until you get what you want. Once a tree has been felled, the tender leaves are in reach for the hungry impala. It's the best meal Kokoto has had in weeks. After their meal of leaves, the herd must quench their thirst, and the river is now the only place for any of the animals to drink. The coming and going of heavyweights helps to keep clear paths to water that might otherwise be too steep for impala. Kokoto drinks next to his mother. The herd's always jumpy around water, with their heads down, they are vulnerable to attack. The arrival of a leopard quickly sends them for the cover of the bush. The elephants aren't going to let anything disturb their long quench. But the leopard is no more of a threat than the other animals. Like them, she's come here to drink. Sunia's cub is big enough now to make kills for himself. His mother encourages him to practice on the neighbors. He still hasn't grasped the importance of ambush. The warthog knows exactly where he is. And without the element of surprise, he is more likely to get hurt than the pig. Once the boar spots Sunia, he beats a hasty retreat. The cub tries again, stalking everything he can find. but he clearly needs more practice. The afternoons are spent grooming. When the herds find it hard to feed, they become more vulnerable to plagues of parasites. Grooming with hooves and teeth help keep infestations at bay. There are some places that are hard to reach, but now comes another advantage of herd life. You scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. And then, of course, oxpeckers are always willing to lend a beak. An oppressive air builds, a forerunner to a storm. But this time it's not the promise of rains, but a new threat. Lightning and dry grass don't mix. The bushfire appears to devastate the scrub, but the animals take it in their stride. Fire is a vital component to the well-being of this landscape. It will help ensure healthy plant growth for next season. The scorched leaves leave predators exposed, making it harder for them to ambush the impala. Providing Kokoto and the others remain alert, their speed should save them. Kokoto is now a fine young buck, almost adult size and with half-grown horns. He won't be mature for a couple of years, but he can no longer rely on his mother's care. Now more than ever, Sunia restricts her hunting to the dark. 
Her night vision is far more advanced than the antelope. The hyenas keep a close eye on her movements. Her success may also be their best chance of a meal tonight. Exposed and vulnerable, the herd is jumpy, knowing that danger could come from any direction at any moment. Kokoto hesitates, not sure whether to follow his mother or stay with the herd. His confusion is the moment Sunia has been waiting for. She strikes. Sunia has him by the throat, ready to suffocate the young buck. The hyenas are quickly on the scene to cash in on the kill, but they spook the leopard. Kokoto is powerful, almost full grown, and just like his mother before him, he breaks free. He runs for his life. Kokoto's inheritance, his speed, has allowed the young buck to live another day. For now, Sunia will retreat into the night, but she'll be back. Leopards and Impala are mortal enemies, locked in an evolutionary arms race. There will be many attacks and many flights for freedom. Kokoto has done well and will soon have the chance to fight for females, breed and pass on his strong genes. His legacy will keep the herd running strong, always ready for speed, arming them for the next great escape.